friends, welcome to episode 9 of Badass Engineers. We're super, super, super close to the end and today I am so excited to be joined by the president of the IAT, the Institution of Engineering and Technology, Professor Danielle George. Hello, I can see you've joined so just send me a request when it asks you to send me. Um, we've got loads of questions this time. It was a very, very, very popular episode. Go like and I am really excited. Um, it's sponsored by Iris Grassroots Education, powering tech, empowering youth as always. And hello, Professor Danielle. Hey, hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm really, really, really well, and I'm so excited to be here speaking with you today. Uh, I'm super excited to be with an award winner like you. <laughs> well, <laughs> I know that your time is so, so, so busy. Your schedule, you're one of the most popular presidents of the IET ever. <laughs> How are you finding it? It's so good. So good. It's going so quickly, though. That's the problem. Um, yeah. But it's, it's such an amazing opportunity, you know, and a great platform to just get engineering out there, get it out to the masses and show people how, how great engineering is. Oh, I love it. I know everybody watching us absolutely knows who you are, but just, <laughs> just to go with the flow, we always introduce our guests. So would you like to introduce yourself today? Yes. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I am Danielle George. I get called Dan George quite a lot. Um, and I am a professor of radio frequency engineering at the University of Manchester um, and also the associate vice president for flexible learning at the university. And, um, and I'm also at the moment the president of the Institution of Engineering and Technology. Uh, for, yes, for, uh, <laughs> for the year until, until October. So it was last October till, till this October. I can see loads of amazing comments already. Um, so CJ Liv is saying you are the most popular president, not one of the most popular presidents. <laughs> and um, Nate, Nate Sully says, too quickly, stay another year, please. Do stay another year. Can you do that? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, no, no. Wait, I was going to go through the questions that I have here. But I want you to tell me about RF engineering because it's one of my favorite subjects, but it's also voodoo like it is next level voodoo sniff charts all of that stuff tell me tell me like a really quick rf intro rf engineering intro Smith charts i love them um it is like magic radio waves are like magic um so the part what i use um the radio spectrum or part radio spectrum um is for radio astronomy so i actually receive signals that are sort of naturally occurring signals, radio signals in the universe. And I, um, I design instrumentation for telescopes. So I design what's called the low noise amplifiers. So I design wow. them and they are, they are tiny. They are sort of one millimeter square, these amplifiers. They're, they're absolutely tiny. And then we cryogenically cool them. We sort of package them a bit and then cryogenically cool them to about 20 Kelvin. And that's just to get rid of all of the noise and just to keep the signal. So, How do you so make them one millimeter square? What are they made out of? Yeah, so I, I don't fabricate them. I send them off to, to a sort of, a, they're all semiconductors. So um, yeah. we use, most of the time we use um, indium phosphide because it's much lower noise, but, um, but they're just like the gallium arsenide chips that we all have on our like mobile phones. Mm. But, um, but yeah, these are indium phosphide, so different types of semiconductors. That's really cool. We've got so many Smith Charts fans in the comments. <laughs> I've never met this many Smith Charts fans before. <laughs> They're great. They are. They're, They're terrifying me. They're ter they just... Anyway, let's go through some of the people's questions out of this back. So we've got 20 minutes and we've got a ton of questions in there. So we're not going to be able to answer them all. Let's just see what comes out. Are you ready? I like it. All yeah. right. Do it. Let's do it. Do, 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 I do, love your bag. Thank you, thank you. It's now the badass engineer's bag. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> okay, so this question is from Mirzai21 and it says, what makes a great engineer or scientist? Oof, I think they are all difference makers, definitely. Yeah. Um, and I think for me, it's they all embrace their failures. And that's really important, I think, as an engineer and, and to have confidence to, to talk about the failures and to share your failures and, and to show people, especially the next generation, mm. that, um, that we're just normal people, right? And we're, we're not this elite, special 
you know, super brainy, you know, some of us are, some of us aren't. Um, and we're very accessible. And, and part of showing how accessible engineering is, I think, is showing that we fail along the way. So I, I love I, that you brought this up because for a long time I felt like I can't make mistakes and it is a defining feature of being an engineer is we can embrace our failure. That's such a beautiful yeah. way of saying it. Yeah, we really need to. And I think it's super important to make sure we engage the, you know, that next generation. <laughs> Hello, Sassy Science. It's lovely to see you. Okay, let's pick another one, shall we? Cool. Let's All right, it. let's do it. Okay, what does this one say? Speed round, speed round. <laughs> Oh, this is from Pamela Wilson, who's one of our winners this year. <laughs> and it says, how can the IAT build on the Young Women Engineer of the Year Awards success and bring other minority categories in the forefront? That's a really good question, I think. That's a really good question, yeah. And weren't they just brilliant? I mean, I know, I know you were part of it, but they were just fabulous this year. You know, they were. You just you sort of knocked it out of the park, all of you. you were yeah. Um, so we've got, we've got YWE and, and that's brilliant and, and long may it continue until we, that good point where we don't need things like YWE and that will be a good point to get to. Yes. Um, we've, the IT has launched a new campaign as well and that's called Celebrating Impact and it's all about just showing how truly diverse engineering and engineers are and and trying to to knock those stereotypes of of that sort of old white man image that I think we still have unfortunately mm -hmm. in engineering um you know get get rid of that one of the best ways to to inspire people I think is just to show people that um how how diverse we are as engineers as well and and that can be how we how we look how we act how, you know what subjects they are and so um so celebrating impact is, is that new campaign. So I'm hoping that YWE carries on and then celebrating impact campaign also sort of carries on. Um, I'm excited about that. Uh, and I've also got a really cool comment from Billy Phones and it says, fail equals first attempt is learning. I like that. Nice. That is really <laughs> nice. Yeah, very true. Oh. <laughs> I love that so much. All right, let's go for another question from okay. the back. Are you ready? Yes, ready. All right, speed rounds. <laughs> okay, this one is from Professor Claire Lucas, who was the WES Prize winner last year. Mm -hmm. And it says, I have so much I want to ask you about leading engineering education. What advice can you give about that? About leading the engineering education? Yes. Um, if you... So, so what you have to do is make sure that you share your passion for, for engineering. Um, and, and that could be with primary school children or it could be with government. You know, whoever you're talking to about engineering education, just make sure that you come across like you are, you know, very, um, very accessible, um, confident and, um, and passionate about your work. I don't know if you're the same, but but pretty much every engineer that I talk to, we talk like this, don't we? We talk with our hands and, you know, so make, make sure you're doing that, you know, and if it, I've, I've, you know, tried to speak to government about engineering education, not always been really successful, but <laughs> I tried to do it. And, um, and it's, it's really important that they get what I'm saying because I'm passionate about it, you know, rather than being very sort of formal and you know if that's not you don't don't make it be you as well yes and i really love what you commented um about accessibility and using accessible language because i think a lot of the times engineers don't do that mm -hmm. um and it really it really rules a lot of people out or a lot of people think that it's not for them because of these jargon really or this big term but if you really understand it i believe you can explain it in the simplest of terms i totally agree i teach um i don't at the minute but but i've been teaching electronic circuit design to first years um at, at first year undergrads at, at university and um and i thought i knew about electronic circuit design until i taught first years and it's until you teach people who who are very new to a subject and you do have to sort of make sure you're not doing the jargon, the buzzwords, you know, and it's, and it's such a, a good way of making sure that you do understand a, a subject is try and teach it. 
I love that. I love that. And Yuande Akinola says, yes, Defo, speak to everyone. <laughs> yes, Yuande. <laughs> All right, are we Love ready for another one? Yeah, do it. That's okay. Da, 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 da. So the theme tune for this show changes every single episode. That's what we have today. Okay, this is from Billy, who is one of the uh, 50 wise campaign, 50 top engineers in the UK, 50 top women engineers in the UK. Um, so she's asking, I would love to ask you, about your thoughts whether long-term remote working will increase or decrease gender diversity in roles oh yeah that's a good one yeah i mean i think we all agree that that change is is needed to um to to decrease the the gender um the gender gap um and if we can use remote working as as another way to help accelerate that change i think that would be really good um for me remote working has worked because it, so it's more about flexibility um, and making sure you have more flexibility. And I think that will reduce the, um, the gender gap. Um, and I think remote working is one of the, the ways you can do that. So for me, I used to go into work, I used to get a quarter past seven train and I'd be in work for 20 to eight, you know, straight at my desk, blah, blah, blah. Now, now I can start work but then I stop and I can take my daughter to work, to work, to school. Yeah. Um, and, and that's really nice for me. And so I make that choice of I do some work and I stop because it's given me that flexibility to stop for 20 minutes, half an hour, take her to school and start again. And I might work 20 minutes, half an hour later in the, in the evening, but at least I've had that flexibility to spend a bit more time with my daughter. So, so I think for me, it, it's about flexibility. Remote working helps with that. And anything that makes it more flexible, I think will help with reducing the, the, um, the gap we've got in, in I gender. Think so I think so too. And having all of this um, time that you're being trusted with has made me feel great, really, that sort of my company trusts me to use my time, yeah. whether in the morning or in the afternoon if it, or if it's two hours in the afternoon and like five hours in the evening so it doesn't matter as long as you get your work done and then you can arrange your life around that too yeah yeah that's really good yeah my husband's reading a, um, a book and I forget who it's by now um, but it's called let my people go surfing Ooh. And it, um, it's he's it's really really famous person I forgot who it is now but very successful businessman and um and he's all about just let people do the work when they need to do it and they want to do it and give people the flexibility. Yeah, absolutely. Let's take another question, but I, I, I can talk so much about that. I've definitely um, at different places where we didn't have that flexibility sat on my desk, not, not feeling like I could do any work, but these were the hours I had to work. So yeah. I ended up not giving in any work that day because my brain wasn't working that day so. yeah exactly and you just have that sometimes don't you you know you just need to walk away and do something else and having that flexibility to do it I think is better for creativity yes absolutely and thank you so much you day for the support in the comments so yes trust a big thing from you and day we agree oh yay my question got picked <laughs> okay so this is a question from yours truly and it says <clears throat> How does one become the president of the IUT asking for a friend? <laughs> <laughs> a question from your friend. Yeah. From my friend. Um, <laughs> <Patrick's> friend. <laughs> get, get yourself involved in, um, in as many different groups in the, in the IUT as you can. Um, and then onto the board of trustees. And, um, and we're getting a, a, a really a better diversity in our board of trustees which i'm super super excited about and um if you're on the board of trustees like you andy is amazing board of trustee hello uh, you and we're looking at you both of us. <laughs> um you know could she be you know in not very many years time you know the next uh, president i think the next female president i think that would be great um, so yeah, get get yourself on um, involved in the IET, um, and which you already are, of course. But you know, carry on doing that. Not you, your friend. Sorry, this is. Oh, you. sorry, yeah, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, get on the board of trustees. The board of trustees 
um, needs people like you or maybe your friend. Um, on <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to let my friend know this brilliant advice. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> oh my God, I cannot believe the time. This, I always do this. I always do this. Let's have one more question anyway, if you have the time. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hopefully it's a good question. <laughs> oh, I picked two. <laughs> Which one am I going to choose? <laughs> I am game master. I make the rules. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, okay. This one is from John Quinn and it says, how is the year as a president of the IAT shaping up so far and how much has had to be adapted? due to the pandemic i'm really interested in the second part especially yeah um i, I mean I, I think it's going super well from my point of view you know i just i love it um you know great chances to get out and talk to as many people as you can great platform to do that um you know showcase engineering it's gone really quickly i, I can't believe it was october and, and now we're in march already you know it's going really quickly so so i'd quite like it to slow down a bit um but Yes, we've had to change quite a lot. Um, the plan was for our 150th anniversary, which is um, this year. Um, I'm excited about that. Really yeah, excited. yeah, and I mean, there's there's still some amazing activities. the The original plan was that it was going to be um, we were going to have our difference makers literally around the world, so go around the world, talk to as many just vloggers, really, you know, vlogging as they went, talking to as many different difference makers um around the world of course we can't do that because we're not traveling so yeah. so but so we've had to make it a lot more um virtual what i think is really good is uh the um president's address was virtual first time ever it was yeah. done and we the the amount of people who were engaged in it was massive compared to normal you know um, and and that's what we're about, right? You know, we want to be able to reach as many people globally. We're a global um, institution, and so so doing it virtually, I think, has had some real upsides as well as downsides. Um, and and if anyone's going to be able to do good tech, it's got to be the IT. <laughs> yes, I love that. I love that so much. I love that so much. And um, I've uh, I, I see what you mean about kind of the positives and the negatives and. You know, because of the pandemic, we're investing so much in all of this technologies that, you know, I have given talks with colleagues from Japan this year, from Spain, and, and just reached an insane amount of people that I wouldn't have otherwise. But I do want reality to come back too. But yes, there's definitely a silver lining. Yes. People love you in the comments, and they want me to ask the other question, even though we're out of time. Yes. How do you oh. feel? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it was the way of the universe really telling us that we need to ask two questions by getting two out. So, <laughs> okay, so this one is from on my on my side. Hopefully, I said that right. And it says, "What branch of engineering do you believe will develop the most in the next few decades?" I have not heard a harder question than this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> close, close the questions on the hardest one. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's multidisciplinary engineering. Um, that's what we need. We need, um, you know, skills to, to embrace that digital technology, to improve healthcare, to, to make our world more sustainable, you know, and, and all of those engineers are gonna have to have, are gonna have to be multi-skilled in order to do that. And multidisciplinary engineering lends itself to the future more, I think, because we're not quite sure what the future is going to bring. Yeah. For sure, it'll bring us some global challenges um, and, um, and we need to be able to solve them. So multidisciplinary engineering, I think, is, is the future. I can't believe how well you answered that question. <laughs> Thank you so much for giving up so much of your time for me tonight and for badass engineers. And I can't wait to work more with you and become the difference makers that this world needs. <laughs> You, you are a difference maker already. Yeah. Am, am I a badass engineer now that I've been on this? I You're the baddest like... ass engineer. <laughs> yes. This is the president, everybody. Look how badass she is. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, it's so lovely to talk to you, Shrook. 
gonna I can't wait till we actually see each other you're gonna cuddle is coming your way when I see you definitely okay. just just heads up I'm five foot one a lot of people think I'm a lot taller than I am I'm not okay I'm, I'm this I'm this short <laughs> I'll not wear my heels then okay <laughs> okay I'm looking forward to it thank you everybody for tuning in I love all the comments and all the questions that you sent in and I'll see you in another two weeks for another badass engineers Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely to see you, Shrook. Thank you. See you. Take Bye. Care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>